Hello and welcome to the next episode in this series on recovery. Uh, today's topic is avenues, different avenues of recovery. We'll talk about what that means in just a minute. Um, but as we always begin, uh, we start with a brief period of uh, stillness and quiet so that we can gather our attention uh, our full concentration on this topic so that the Holy Spirit may speak to us um, in whatever way we might need for our healing, for our recovery, for our own little type of resurrection from the afflictions that uh, bother us. So we kind of clear out some space in the beginning uh, before we start uh, the content, clear out some space in stillness and quiet we let the concerns and the stressors of our lives take a back seat for just a brief time. Uh, we focus on what we're about uh, here and now. We don't let concerns about what's happening uh, later today, tomorrow. We don't let the concerns about what happened yesterday or in the past uh, trouble us for now because we're going to be fully present here and now in this uh, moment. So we allow God to begin to speak to us in the stillness and quiet as he often does. Uh, we'll pause for just a brief few seconds and then we'll have the opening prayer. So we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're watching on the YouTube video, you can join us. Uh, the prayer is on the screen. Holy Spirit, we call upon you now to join us in this session in a special way. For we ask for your wisdom and your healing. Encourage and inspire us with clear thinking and understanding and truth. And fill us with a deep and satisfying fire of your love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, some of you are listening on the audio-only podcast. It's called Encounter with Dr. Ken. Uh, if you're searching for it on your podcast, you can find uh, this podcast on various platforms, Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify. That's where the podcasts are. And then if you want to look at the YouTube video that shows the PowerPoint screens with information, if you're more visual like that, then you can find it on uh, YouTube searching for Grazia Plena, Dr. Ken. You can also find the old episodes on the podcast and on the YouTube channel. We're happy that you join us either way, audio or video. Um, so last session, last episode, we talked about a topic called abstinence versus sobriety. Um, we defined abstinence as a as a letting go, at least temporarily, of something that we're attached to. Blue Bell ice cream, marijuana, bad relationships, something like that. This may be for religious or personal reasons. So, for example, us Catholics during Lent, um, we intentionally, for religious growth, uh, for our spiritual growth uh, during Lent, we decide on something that we might abstain from to uh, teach us self-control and so forth. Abstinence, uh, self, we teach ourselves self-control, obedience, and humility. Um, letting go of these things for uh, religious or personal reasons uh, for, for this growth, it's good for us in, in many ways. Uh, because we want to be reminded that our main central attachment should always be to our creator more than anything else, even even more than our spouse. Our main attachment needs to be to our creator. 
Uh, and so abstinence is a reminder of that. It's a it's a exercise in recalling that um, if we choose to orient our thinking around it in that way, uh, abstinence can be a good teacher. So there's nothing necessarily wrong, wrong with abstinence in that way. Uh, but we we consider that what sobriety is kind of in contrast to abstinence. So sobriety is really a way of living. It's a way of living life may involve abstinence, um, but it really focuses on living a life of grace and sanctification, becoming holy um, as our Father in heaven is holy, being able to think clearly, being alert for uh, any spiritual psychological attacks and temptations and triggers. Uh, so it's a way of being vigilant, uh, living in a clean, honest, uh, sober way. Uh, last time we also looked at a number of scripture verses from the letters of St. Peter and St. Paul that kind of help uh, define and help us understand what sobriety means in this larger sense. Um, and so uh, we, we have uh, this consideration of this topic because some of us, you know, are struggling with, you know, do I give up alcohol and how do I go about that? Uh, do I give up pornography? Uh, what, how does that work exactly for me? Um, and some of us are kind of white knuckling it. We're just holding on for dear, dear life, you know, just trying to avoid this temptation of pornography or, or uh, compulsive overeating, whatever it may be. We're being abstinent, but it's really difficult. We're not making any other changes in our life. We're just being abstinent. And so we kind of miss out if that, even though if we're successful avoiding those things that we're being abstinent from, we kind of miss out on this deeper inner transformation that might be involved in this uh, idea, this notion of sobriety. And so that's that's that was kind of the message of last time. And we looked at the dangers of abstinence only approaches that don't support this healing and transformation, uh, that the dangers that we may fall and, and not be successful in the long run if we're just trying abstinence only approach. Hey, if abstinence only works for you, that's great. Uh, it doesn't work for a lot of people. And, and last topic uh, kind of explained how that works and why that might be. So today we're going to talk about a variety of different avenues of recovery. Every person's recovery doesn't look the same. Um, just, just as each person's psychological growth and healing they're different. E each person's journey is slightly different. It's unique. Uh, it's it's because the Holy Spirit works in, in the way that that particular person needs, that particular person might connect with, and that's fine. Uh, remember that in this series on recovery, we're talking about recovery in very broad terms, not just recovery from, from a physical illness, a mental illness, not just recovery from from an addiction or an unhealthy attachment uh, uh, to a person, but we're talking about recovery in the sense that every human being really needs recovery because of our fallen state uh, in our Christian belief. We believe that humans are created fallen and redeemed, um, and so every human person really needs to be in, in a sense of recovery because they're struggling to overcome sin uh, which we still have temptations, even though we're saved uh, by the grace of the cross and, and Jesus. Uh, we still have these temptations, uh, this, this uh, uh, tendency to sin. And so we all of us uh, can be in recovery together, all humans, no matter what our issues might be. Today's topic may actually make some people pretty mad at me, especially uh, people that work in the field of addictions, recovery, um, they they may get angry because I'm talking about a variety of different avenues of recovery. Why is that? Well, uh, some many people that work in uh, the recovery field, they've experienced their own addictions, afflictions, and they've found their own path for recovery. And many of them are just really uh, fanatical almost that their path is the path that everybody has to take. Uh, especially we find this sometimes in the 12-step community uh, that people will say, hey, if you don't do it the 12-step way, there is there is no other easier way. Um, if you're doing it some other way, you're just doing it halfway and you're not going to be successful. 
um, if you're trying to abstain uh, and you're not working the steps, if you're uh, uh, taking some of these other approaches, um, you're, you're, it's not going to work for you. And and people like uh, Dr. Ken shouldn't even mention these other avenues of recovery because uh, the abstinence uh, sobriety way of 12 steps and, and things like that, or that's the only way. So I just want to say that um, some people might be upset because of what I'm proposing here, but um, I stand on the science and the research. Uh, the, the unbiased science and research indicates that people find recovery in a large variety of ways. And in a sense, that's good news because there's not just one way uh, people can recover in a lot of different ways. Uh, so I think the science backs me on that. And, and so that's what I'll stand on, the, the truth from unbiased research, which is hard to find these days, by the way, unbiased research. Um, so this is good news, as I said. Um, it's good news, especially for people that have tried one approach and it hasn't worked for them. There may be other things for you to try. And, and so you should take courage and not give up because of that. So let's look at some of these different avenues of recovery. And this is in no particular order. I'm not mentioning uh, this in any order of preference or importance or success rates or anything like that. I'm just throwing these up on uh, up on the screen or, or into this list uh, for our consideration. We'll look at some of the main the major ones and this list is not uh, comprehensive. There probably are plenty that are not on this list at all uh, also. Um, but I, I do want to start by mentioning the 12 step programs. I think 12 step programs are fantastic and and one of the reasons for that is because 12 step programs are spiritual approaches to healing and recovery. Um, they've been around for uh, since the 1930s, uh, so they have stood up the test of time. 12-step programs have helped uh, thousands and thousands of people, maybe millions, all around the world with all kinds of different attachments and afflictions and addictions. The original 12-step approach was AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, of course. Um, but there is a 12-step program for just about everything under the sun, right? So uh, alcohol, um, ABA, we could say anorexics and bulimics anonymous, uh, CODA, codependence anonymous for, for people that are, work, are you know, working on codependent issues, um, EA, emotions anonymous. Uh, how about that? Emotions anonymous, good program. Uh, GA, gamblers anonymous. Uh, we have uh, lots, of, lots of people struggling with gambling these days. Um, OA, Overeaters Anonymous, um, obesity is an epidemic in our country. Um, uh, one of the big areas that people really need to work on is compulsive overeating. Um, NA, Narcotics Anonymous, PA, Pills Anonymous. Uh, PA is becoming more and more important these days as people struggle with uh, addictions to uh, pills, you know, uh, opiates and thing, prescription pills and things like that. Uh, big problems with um, pills. So Pills Anonymous addresses that more specifically, which is good. Um, and then SA, Sexaholics Anonymous, and so on and so on and so on. 12-step program for everything. Beautifully, beautifully constructed program. I really believe the Holy Spirit was involved. Um, in producing this 12-step program. I encourage you uh, to work the 12 steps, especially with the support of someone that's done it uh, and that understands it deeply, uh, to read the big books for each of these programs. Each of these programs has a big book. Uh, the AA big book tends to be blue. Um, the, X, uh, the, the SA uh, Sexaholics Anonymous book is white and so forth. Um, you can buy these books on Amazon and read them. They're so helpful. I really encourage you uh, to consider 12-step programs as a way of recovery for you, especially if you uh, are tuned into spiritual issues and, uh, and it fits perfectly with Christian and Catholic uh, faith, uh, actually has its roots in Christian Catholic faith. Uh, so consider the 12 steps, really a great program. Um, other types of support groups, um, so there's one for people that have struggled with depression and bipolar 
uh, mood disorders called re-mind. Uh, it used to be called depressive and manic depressive, but I think they changed it to re-mind. Uh, you can find some of those groups in your community uh, for people who want uh, kind of fellowship and support around uh, recovering from depression and bipolar mood disorder. Um, divorce care, we have so many divorces in our country and divorces are actually on the increase during COVID uh, because COVID has stressed marriages, you know? And so um, divorce care can be found at many churches, uh, divorce care programs. They have like a, a three year cycle of courses or classes um, that you can participate in if you're recovering from divorce. Divorce can be so painful uh, for people um, to come out of a, a, a committed marriage where once you had love and deep connection and then it's over, a divorce care can help people recover and move on from that. Um, and then NAMI groups uh, for people, for families that are dealing with mental illness issues, um, NAMI uh, provides great resources, information, support, classes, and so forth, especially for family members of loved ones that are struggling with really severe mental illnesses, uh, adults and children, uh, very, very good support groups, uh, NAMI. Um, then, of course, there's professional mental health counseling, like uh, like the kind of counseling that I offer as a psychologist. Uh, professional mental health counseling can be a, a great avenue of recovery and deep healing, personal growth and transformation uh, for whatever issues might you might be struggling with, addictions and mental illnesses, marriage and family problems and so forth. Um, medication is is another avenue of recovery medication for mental illness. Uh, we even have medications now for addictions. Um, medication can be an important uh, avenue of recovery. Some people really need medication in order to overcome their mental illness or their addiction. Um, others don't. And, and so, you know, it really just depends on the assessment of a mental health professional to understand if medication is part of your avenue of recovery or not. Uh, something that's come about in, in recent decades is called peer coaching. Um, so this is uh, this is support of someone that's kind of been down the path before you. Um, so it might be a person uh, that's recovered from alcoholism or drug addiction, um, and they're they're just going to kind of be a friend coach. Uh, not they're not professional, uh, but they're going to be a friend coach to encourage the person on their pathway of recovery, whatever whatever the pathway might be. Um, and it's it's really quite uh, helpful to have a friend coach uh, walk that path of recovery with you, answering your questions, providing direction, providing accountability, and so forth. Um, peer coaches sometimes have absolutely no training in education and recovery or psychological uh, issues or psychology. Um, sometimes peer coaches have taken classes, they've taken some certifications and so forth. Um, and, and sometimes uh, even uh, states like the state of Texas uh, certifies peer coaches that have had formal training in how to be a peer coach. Um, so you kind of have to be careful as you consider uh, choosing a peer coach if that's the pathway that you uh, that you uh, choose. You want to know about that person and their background. Um, and you should keep in mind that peer coaches are not mental health counselors and a good peer coach will will tell you honestly that they're not a mental health counselor. Uh, a peer coach is not a a 12 step sponsor. A 12 step sponsor is a mentor who helps you work the 12 steps specifically. So a peer coach is not that exactly. Um, but a peer coach is more like a friend that walks the walk with you in your recovery, a person that's recovered from depression. And so they're going to help you uh, in your recovery for depression based on what they've experienced and, and sharing their own lessons learned. Uh, spiritual direction. So in, in the Catholic tradition, uh, going back uh, to, you know, two, almost 2000 years since the time of Christ, uh, we've, we've had this notion of uh, spiritual directors. These are, these are people that help guide us help us in our prayer life, in our relationship with God. Um, it's, it's kind of like a peer coach in a way. Uh, it's one person helping another person in their journey. 
Um, but a spiritual director is, is often a person who's had some, some really formal experience and training in providing spiritual direction. They've been in spiritual direction themselves and they've had a good growth to a certain point where they feel like they can assist others. Um, in the old days, spiritual directors were always um, clergy and uh, religious, uh, religious men or women. Um, nowadays, we have what's called lay spiritual directors. So these are these are people that are not clergy or religious, uh, that are spiritual guides. Um, often, spiritual directors are part of retreats or are are they are connected with re retreat centers, um, and spiritual direction retreats are another avenue of recovery for the issues that you may uh, be dealing with. Um, you can find spiritual directors by contacting your your uh, Catholic parish or Catholic retreat centers or uh, houses, convents and religious houses that may be in your um, your area, like the Bazillion Fathers, the Spiritan Fathers, the Redemptorists, uh, the Dominicans, uh, so many different uh, religious orders. They have houses and convents and uh, monasteries where uh, you may be able to find spiritual director. Um, in the early church, uh, we talked about um, uh, people that would go into the desert, the desert fathers, they would go into the desert where the hermits were living and they would consult with the holy men and women that were living in the desert. Uh, we call them desert fathers, desert, desert mothers, uh, to consult them on spiritual issues because of their fantastic spiritual direction. Um, some other more recent groups celebrate recovery and Catholic in recovery groups. I think Catholic in recovery is from California. Celebrate recovery is a is a Protestant organization that uh, uh, that helps people to work the steps. Um, but it's all it's all kind of um, addictions together in the same room. So instead of just alcoholics or or sex addicts, everybody's together. It doesn't matter what your addiction is. Um, but this is a Christian, uh, mostly Protestant uh, approach, working the steps together, in, in, uh, invoking the Holy Spirit and, and uh, uh, worshiping together uh, in Celebrate Recovery. Good, good program. Uh, sometimes Catholics don't feel comfortable there, but uh, many Catholics can participate in Celebrate Recovery and it works well for them. Um, kind of an alternative to, to Celebrate Recovery is started called Catholic and recovery groups. So these are just Catholics, but but these are these are like CR. Um, the Catholic and recovery is people with different types of addictions, kind of general generally recovering together, uh, and that's a good uh, good effective approach for many people. Uh, there's something called self management recovery training called Smart Recovery. Um, this is an approach to healing and recovery uh, from addictions, especially um, it's kind of an alternative to 12 step in that smart recovery is not a spiritual program. Uh, it's not necessarily a program that uh, preaches abstinence. Um, it's it's a program that doesn't uh, base is not based on the disease model as 12 step programs believe that people with addictions have a disease like a medical disease. Um, so smart recovery is, a, is another approach to uh, recovering from addiction, kind of a, as an alternative to 12 steps. Smart recovery has helped many people. They have meetings all around. Uh, there's other approaches that um, encourage people toward uh, moderation or limiting uh, their exposure to whatever their affliction is. So if alcohol is the issue, if anxiety is the issue, these these programs teach people to uh, to take these things in moderation so that they don't become overwhelmed with them. Um, instead of saying you should completely have your goal as just completely wiping out these things out of your life. So instead of saying I'm going to give up alcohol completely, um, I just learn how to control my alcohol use, uh, keep it very minimal, very limited, and uh, and not to stray from that. Some people can learn how to do that. Some can't. Um, some can't tolerate any alcohol because they end up back where they were before, for example. Um, and so moderation approaches don't work for everybody, but they may work for some people. Uh, 
you know, be careful with that if you have a really serious addiction. Uh, we also have inpatient hospital and residential programs. Um, these, these programs uh, uh, involve kind of really intensive treatment, a short amount of time. Often they take the person out of their, uh, that, out of their environment, environment where they're struggling with mental illness or addictions. Um, and then we also have sober living houses where people live together where they're trying to uh, get off of drugs, alcohol, and so forth. Uh, and, and they live together in this group uh, support like that. Finally, we have something that's newer. It's called intensive outpatient programs. Uh, many times these programs are attached to hospitals, uh, but the idea is that a person goes to therapy or goes to these programs uh, several times a week, maybe after work for a few hours. Um, there's often uh, medication involvement. There's group therapy involvement. There's some in individual therapy involvement. Um, intensive outpatient programs are like a step down from uh, inpatient hospital programs. Uh, many insurance uh, 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 packages cover IOPs, um, and IOPs can can last for weeks, a few weeks. Uh, they can provide the stabilization that a person may need when they're recovering from depression, they're recovering from uh, OCD, they're recovering from some addictions. Uh, IOP can be a good avenue of recovery for many people. Um, and, and so I'd also like to say that um, many avenues of recovery involve several of these different uh, aspects that I've, I've listed here. So uh, it's very common for a person to be in mental professional mental health counseling and to work a 12 step program. I have a lot of people that, that, that I see that do that. It's very common for people to be in mental health counseling and spiritual direction. We do a lot of that here at Grazia Plena, for example. Um, it's, very, uh, it's very possible that a person could go to an IOP and then continue uh, medication and professional mental health counseling afterwards. Very common for people to be on medication and involved in 12 step programs. So all kind of combinations here can be part of these avenues of recovery. That's for your consideration today. Um, on our Grazia Plena website, graziaplenacounseling.org, um, you can find a list of resources. Uh, there's a, a page that uh, has COVID resources, that has resources for a chastity for those who are looking for help recovering from um, addic uh, addictions such as sexual addictions and infidelity and things like that because it's so common. We have a lot of those resources for chastity. Um, if you're looking on, if you're watching on the YouTube video, you can shoot this QR code with your camera phone that will take you right there on your phone. As we always do each week, we're going to close with uh, the prayer for St. Michael the Archangel who's a powerful intercessor for us. So let's do that now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next topic next week is going to be on stress and recovery. Does anybody have stress? Yeah, probably a lot of us. So we're going to talk about uh, stress and recovery. Um, stress can be a big stumbling block in our recovery. Uh, stress is at all time high levels during COVID. And so this might be a good time for us to consider stress. Many of us are stressed out about school. So we'll talk about stress next time. I hope you'll tune in um, and please feel free to share these videos and podcasts with your friends. You can subscribe to these channels so you don't miss any episodes when they come out. Um, and then finally, I mentioned that Grazia Plena is a 501c3 faith-based nonprofit charity. The only way that we've survived these eight, almost nine years is because of donations from the community individual donations, donations from churches, donations from private foundations. 
Uh, we would not have survived if not for those donations. <clears throat> this content on these videos and podcasts is put out free so that more people can access it. But if you should so feel inclined uh, to chip in five or ten dollars, uh, we put this link up on the video. You can shoot it with your QR code and uh, put a credit card in. We're happy to receive your little donation of any amount. Uh, the website is graziaplanacounseling.org, and at the top of our website is a little uh, blue banner that says uh, donate. That's our donation and payments uh, link on our website. So God bless you. I uh, hope you're doing well, staying healthy, and we look forward to catching up with you next time. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.